Welcome, my name is Benjamin Berger and today I'm going to talk about the, uh, the tra tragedy that struck the country of Brazil and the fire and destruction of its national museum in Rio de Janeiro in early September of 2018. Among the specimens lost in the fire were several specimens of a unique and strange fossil pterosaur, Anhang Ara, including possibly the holotype specimen of the species Anhang Ara Bitterzdorf, specimen 4805V in the museum, a beautifully preserved fossil skull of this bizarre and strange animal, but also several other Brazilian pterosaurs. Now, I don't know the certain status of these particular specimens in Brazil, if they may have been on loan during the fire or placed somewhere other than the portions of the building that burned. But it's a sad day for paleontology when paleontological collections like these are lost, including the casts and specimens on display for the public. Brazil is one of the richest countries in its fossil record of pterosaurs. And while fame has come to the pterosaurs of China, of Europe, and the United States, the amazing fossil record of Brazilian pterosaurs is not highlighted enough. And I thought with this video, I would turn attention to this fossil record and its importance. Pterosaurs were first discovered in Europe beginning as far back as the late 1700s from the Jurassic rocks of Germany and were widely discussed by early 1800s by anatomists and paleontologists who debated what type of creature these strange fossils might belong to. In 1809, the most famous anatomist of his day, George Cuvier named the first and most well-known of these fossils Pterodactylus, without having studied the actual fossil due to the ongoing Napoleonic Wars. He wrote his whole description based on previous descriptions and reports from other scientists who had seen the fossil in person. He, guard, he regarded this weird fossil as a flying reptile rather than some weird bat or extinct bird or many of the other ideas that were being flown around. The term pterodactyl became synonymous with the entire group of flying reptiles based on this early work by Cuvier, but really his paper was meant to represent a single genus name, hence the more appropriate name for the group is pterosaur. It would be um, equivalent to calling all dinosaurs megliosaurs because megliosaur was the first dinosaur to be named. Now, throughout the 1800s and early 1900s, Brazilian pterosaurs were unknown. But things dramatically changed in 1971 when new fossil pterosaurs began to be discovered and described in the Ararat Basin of northeastern Brazil, in the southern portion of the state of Ceará. In this part of Brazil, there is a thick sequence of early Cretaceous rocks representing the Santana group, which are Albanian age, about 115 to 100 million years old. Within this group of formations is the upper Ramliodu and lower Crandu formations or members, which both have a fossil record of pterosaurs. These pterosaurs were found not because people were actively looking for pterosaurs, but because of the amazing fossil fish that are found in these layers. Thousands and thousands of incredibly well-preserved fossil fish are found in these rock layers, which are preserved in carbonate nodules that when split open, often reveal fossils inside, a bit like birthday presents. Starting back as far as the 1830s, these fossil fish were known by the scientific community. Rock shops and amateur collectors bought and sold and traded these fossil fish, and these fossils grew internationally as they were collected and studied abroad. The incredible fossil fish 
attracted the interest of Herbert R. Axelrod in the United States, who had made a fortune in publishing tropical aquarium fish guides in the, for the pet trade, including manuals and magazines and instructional books on how to care for your aquarium. He also collected fossil fish as well, and with his financial backing, led a scientific investigation into the fossil record of the fish in the Santana group of Brazil. This research led to the publication of The Santana Fossils, an illustrated atlas by John Maisie and others in 1991. Sadly, Herbert Axelrod's fortune was lost, and he uh, fled the country due to tax fraud, and he was later arrested and eventually passed away nearly penniless. But he left behind a lot of research on the Santana Formation and its fossils. In addition to the amazing array of fossil fish, every once in a while a cracked open nodule would feature not a fish, but a pterosaur fossil. And these pterosaurs likely died while looking for fish from which they feasted on and sank into the waters to become fossilized along with their unconsumed prey. Most of these pterosaurs have been studied by the eminent Brazilian paleontologist Alexander Kellner and include a dozen or so species. Most of these pterosaurs belong within a family called the Ornithosheridae, first named by uh, Harry Seeley for scrappy fragmentary fossils found in the early Cretaceous of southern England back in the 1870s. Now, some researchers uh, sometimes refer to this family as the Anhangaraidae, uh, named for the iconic, more complete fossils of Anhangara uh, from Brazil. One of the best known specimens is one that escaped the fire, and that is AMNH 22555, which is housed in New York. Although other specimens of this genus are known, it's debated how many unique species there are of Anhangara, uh, as skulls show individual variation, uh, maybe from sexual dimorphism, differences in age, or differences in the preservation of the fossil. What makes these pterosaurs from the Santana group so interesting is that they are found in a crucial, critical period in pterosaur history. The rise of birds in the late Jurassic and their proliferation during the early Cretaceous meant that pterosaurs had to contend with a, another flying group of vertebrates that was going after the same resources. Now, unlike the Cenozoic bats, uh, which occupy the dark skies of night, pterosaurs were diurnal flyers, just like birds. Pterosaurs had a number of advantages over birds, but struggled during the early Cretaceous, losing out to the habitats of enclosed canopy forests. Pterosaurs did much better in the wide open spaces, being able to fly longer and longer distances than birds could. It was above the oceans where there was opportunity to capture fish as a food source that pterosaurs excelled at during the Cretaceous until their eventual extinction at the end of the Cretaceous period. During the early Cretaceous, these seagoing pterosaurs became specialized fish eaters, exhibiting long snouts fringed with teeth that allowed easy capture of fish below the surface waters. Like modern osprey and bald eagles, these pterosaurs could swoop down and grab fish on the go, dipping their heads down into the water and grabbing fish with their long but robust snouts. Anahangara had extremely robust wings and shoulder girdle. It had been described as a head stuck on to large wings. The skull measured about a half a meter in length with an estimated wingspan of 4.5 meters. Uh, 
about the size of a marabou stork. Their massive wings and short hind legs have suggested that they could land and take off from the water. Anahengara was able to rest at sea during long cross-ocean trips and feed while swimming. It was not a great walker on land and may have spent most of its life in the water or flying. We know a great deal about Anhangara due to these incredible fossils from Brazil. Museums are special places, meant to preserve the record of life, both living and extinct. They are also not forever, and they must be supported by the public, both financially as well as politically. The loss of any museum is a loss of knowledge. If you're interested in supporting the National Museum, they are doing a crowdfunding campaign right now uh, to maintain their educational outreach in, to the children of Rio de Janeiro and by keeping open a small building on the grounds of the Botanical Garden. Uh, there's a link in the description below if you'd like to donate. If you're interested in pterosaurs, there are three books that I recommend. Uh, the oldest one, which I think is out of print now, is uh, The Illustrated Encyclopedia of Pterosaurs by Wellenhofer. Um, the other one that, that's a really good, great book with good images is The Pterosaurs from Deep Time by David Ewen. And the most recent one is just called Pterosaurs by Mark Wheaton. Uh, and these are, these are great books. Um, all three of these are really great books with lots of great illustrations and provide a lot of information about pterosaurs if you're interested. I hope that you enjoy these weekly videos on paleontology. And I want to thank my Patreon supporters, Brian Cleaver, Alejandro Marres, uh, Artotis 1811, Justin Bovey, and Pablo Luzato Figuez, and all my Trilobite supporters for keeping these videos coming and making them freely available on YouTube. Um, and also encourage me to make more of them. If you'd like to support these videos, check out the link below.